Good day, fellow investors. Why are stocks crashing? We have seen a 3% drop on Monday and it's proper to discuss what's going on from the short-term perspective and what's going on from the long-term perspective. I hope to give you value with this video so that you know how to position yourself in relation to your long-term goals. Let's see what happened. So here to date, the S&P 500 is not down much, just 3.43%, but this is a big deal after 2017 and stocks going up 20%. So the market is clearly looking for direction and that's why you see these spikes up and down. One day 3% down, the next day 2% up, etc, etc. So in the short term, the market is telling us I'm looking for direction. The momentum trades that have been going on in 2017 based on tax benefits, higher earnings thanks to that, have been priced in the market and now the market is looking for okay what will push stocks higher because like it or not 95 percent of stock market investors now that are trading are looking for catalysts that will push stocks higher not fundamentals from the long-term perspective we always have buffett and what we have to look at is his cash piling so he started really piling cash from his usual level of around 40 billion in the first quarter of 2014 and now he is at 116 billion of cash on Berkshire's balance sheet. So let's first dig into the short-term perspective and then look at Buffett's long-term perspective and then you can choose which one you prefer. So stock market in 2017 went up 20 percent but then January was good. After January, February, March very very volatile. What did we have? We had higher interest rates coming from the Fed free interest rates increases in 2018 with expected more increases in 2019. Higher interest rates mean only one thing for stocks and I'm going to let Buffett tell the story. Interest rates are to stock prices what gravity is uh, uh, to matter. I mean if, if interest rates were nothing and they were going to be nothing forever you'd be buying stuff that would yield you one percent or two percent. You might be buying real estate, you might be buying stocks. If interest rates are, on the short rate, 21 percent like they were in 1982 under Volcker, you can look at a stock at six times earnings and you can say, well, that's really isn't that attractive. So interest rates, I mean, that, that's, what's, that's what drives valuations. And, and we've had these very, very low interest rates now for some time, a lot longer than I thought we would have them and probably a lot longer than most people thought we'd have them. So if, let's say, interest rates in rise, then if you have a dividend yielding stock of 5% and now let's say a treasury goes to 5%, that dividend yielding stock, let's say you require a 10% return. This means that the value of that stock when the yield goes from 5 to 10 drops 50%. And that's how interest rates affect stocks, asset prices, real estate values, whatever. Buffett knows that. Buffett knew during the last 10 years that interest rates will have to go up, are bound to go up sometimes in the future and he started preparing from that in 2014. So interest rates are one. Further we have had trade wars and now we have the regulatory scare surrounding social media stocks, sur surrounding Amazon, surrounding the monopoly, surrounding internet, whatever is let's say making the market jittery. Especially as the big tech companies are the biggest components of stock market indices, which means that if the, one of those stocks moves, then the index is impacted heavily. So that's also skewed towards tech companies, the index is. Now in this turmoil, suddenly the two year or the three year or the five year treasury seems much more attractive than stocks. Let me explain. So the two-year treasury yield went from 0.8% one and a half years ago to the current 2.3%. This means suddenly that the 2.3% are higher than the 1.8% dividend yield of the S&P 500. Those who were investing in stocks one and a half years ago looked, okay, stocks 1.8%, two-year treasury 0.8%, I prefer the dividend yield from stocks. However, now that stocks got volatile, that there is a real probability for a stock market crash and drop, now people say, okay, I prefer the 2.3 no risk treasury than the very risky 1.8 dividend yield from the S&P 500 when stocks could easily crash 5% in a day and 20-30% in a matter of months. So that's the short-term risk reward. And especially 
investors, speculators are looking for catalysts that will push stocks higher in 2018. But there aren't any. We can look at earnings growth, but that's already been priced in. So what is it there that will push stock prices higher? The most likely thing that there is, is a recession in 2019. And that's not something that pushes stock higher. So the market is really, let's say, in a limbo now, and we will see which trend will prevail. Will stocks continue to go up? Will they move sideways up and down with huge volatility, which is excellent for day traders? Or the market will really go into correction and then bear market territory. It will be interesting to follow. To make things easier, it's always best to have a long-term perspective on what's going on. And let's see why Buffett stopped acquiring companies and stopped investing, let's say, in 2014. This is the EBITDA acquisition multiple for US companies. And you can see that in 2013, 12, it was around eight, below eight, then it spiked from eight to 15, which means that suddenly acquiring companies became twice as expensive as it was in 2012. And what did Buffett do? He said, okay, I'm not interested in paying 15 multiple for a company, EBITDA multiple, which means that the price earnings ratio is already at 25, which means a return of around 4%. He says, okay, I'm going to wait it out because I know interest rates are going to get up. If that happens in the next year, good. If it happens in five years, good. If it happens in 10 years, Buffett will come again ahead of the majority of the market. And that's how Buffett invests, and that's how long-term investors invest. They look at the business yield, look at if it passes, if it is below their threshold or above their threshold. When it is above higher in business yield, earnings yield, then you buy. And if you follow such a long-term perspective on the markets, these short-term ups and downs don't really affect you. You just deploy your capital when it's wise to do so and do nothing when it's not wise to do so. Or rebalance according. So many will look at stocks and discuss, okay, how can a stock market crash 3% in one day? The economy is the same as it was last week and then we see a 3% one day crash. But even crazier is how can the stock market go up 64% in five years while the economy has been growing at an average of 2% per year? So there is a clear divergence there and we will see, will the economy catch up? or will stocks catch up to the economy? Tomorrow I'll make a video about where are we now in the economic cycle and that's a video that will explain even better the long-term perspective on stocks and what Buffett has been waiting already for four years. Thank you for watching, see you tomorrow in the economic cycle video, looking forward to your comments, please subscribe if you like the content, click like and I thank you for watching.